Lies with Horror Lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. It is week 324 here at Body Bags. I'm your Wednesday night host. And my voice is shot, so please bear with me. I just really want to do this and uh, not miss an opportunity uh, to get this review in this week. So, uh, Black freaking Sunday, uh, Mario Baba Classic 1960. I can't believe it's never been reviewed, or at least uh, uh, my, my search of it didn't see any. So uh, I thought I'd continue my Italian November uh, Barbara Steele uh, gothic sort of uh, arc, if you will. And of course, that is the Kino release of this film. And if you are unfamiliar with this film, Shame on you, really, but uh, I can't imagine there's many out there or uh, if anyone that's not seen this. So, but uh, Mario Bava, his directorial debut, uh, credited that is. I know he's got other films uh, that lead up to this that he's uncredited, but this is his uh, first credited. And uh, Barbara Steele, of course, graces the screen as uh, two people, both. Uh, Asa the Witch uh, Vada and uh, Katia Vada that we'll see through most of the film. John Richardson is the young Dr. Gorbach and uh, Andrea uh, Chechi, I think, is, uh, is the older Dr. Uh, Kuvian, uh, who is uh, uh, him and the other professor there, they're uh, professors, right? And uh, Ivo Gariani, I think, is how you say his name, uh, the Prince of Vada, and of course there are many others. Uh, at the core of this film, really, what you have as a story is a gothic tale of a witch uh, who and her and her parable, her lover, right, uh, her secret lover, not so secret anymore, uh, get burned at the stake uh, for uh, witchery, for uh, being witches and delving into sorcery and whatnot. And uh, of course, uh, it's uh, Asa's brother that carries out the execution. And before they're burned alive, of course, they're, they're stamped into the flesh. And then they've got the mask of Satan that is uh, placed over it. And then with a hammer, just, man, brought down and uh, impaled upon their faces. And uh, the only thing, uh, well, as Asa then is uh, put up on her uh, or lifted up above as they get ready to light the fire, she will pronounce a curse on not only her brother and his descendants, but probably anyone and everyone there on scene. And then she promises that she will be back one day and uh, to see through this thing. And it'll be about 200 years, uh, but just before the flames are allowed to do their work, uh, it begins to rain. And well, that just freaks out all the villagers, right? And so they have no choice now. They have to retrieve her body and bury her in a, in a tomb where she will rest for like 200 years. At that point, I'm not gonna go too much further, but at that point, you get a couple um, professors on route through Vidovia on their way. This is probably uh, early 1800s on their way to Moscow, I believe, for an academic convention of sorts to hear a bunch of lectures. Uh, their carriage will conveniently break down just near Aza's crypt. And of course, they're, in, uh, they're very curious. And uh, they will, as the guy is fixing the carriage, they'll go wander into this crypt just to kind of take a look around, look, see, right? And uh, they will stumble upon Aza's, uh, her resting place. And they will notice real quick that there is a, uh, it's like a stone cross that is sort of there, as he tells us, to keep her there. And there's a glass, uh, which is really weird, but there's a glass sort of window you can look down into her, see her face with a mask on. And, uh, but through uh, I, just fate and destiny, uh, you'll, he will sort of, uh, a bat will come in from nowhere. And as he's trying to fend it off and kill it, he will destroy inadvertently, so to speak, the cross. And then, of course, the glass window. And then, of course, he'll end up getting cut. His, some of his blood will drip into her mask. And as they wander on their way out of there, of course, you have the beginnings of, re, of a reified, uh, revivified, I guess, witch, and uh, who has her sights on the Vada castle. And so she will shortly begin to resurrect 
her uh, other and uh, pull him out of his grave. And then the two of them will begin the process of implementing this curse. And uh, so they're all the way through, which is just awesome. This is a castle piece, gothic horror at its absolute best. I mean, Mario freaking Baba. I mean, this for being really his directorial debut, he knocks it out of the freaking park. I mean, he is an absolute master. And he built some of these sets. I mean, you don't even know it's a set. I mean, he'll do these 360s and you're just left there thinking this can't be a set, but in fact it is a set masterfully built and executed with the camera on. He is, of course, the cinematographer on this, and he had gotten a lot of work with the camera leading up to this moment in time, and he'll continue to use the camera, whether it's uh, Bay of Blood in 71 or Planet of the Vampires in 65, and I'm just gonna roll on now, Rabbit Dog 74. Uh, you know, in a lot of his films, he will, he will be uh, the guy with the camera, but he will also be the director, and what a masterful director. Mario Baba was, and of course his son, who would work with him, would carry that on, right, Lamberto, and we would see him, um, if we want to say at his height, uh, Demons 1 and 2, as he worked with Dario, and uh, so, and of course, out from under him, Michele Solve will come, right, one of my favorite Italian slashers of all time, stage right, and so Mario, I mean, and he begins this, right, I mean, you're going to have others in, in Italy, uh, freaking Fulci and, and uh, of course Argento and uh, uh, Ruggiero Diodato and, and uh, Margaretti and uh, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, this is why we spend a freaking month talking about Italian horror over at the 22 Shots Moods and Horror, right? Is what they're doing all month this month. And so I thought I would just spend a couple weeks and just pick a film here and there. But what I decided on was just this... Uh, Barbara Steele arc, and so of course she graces the screen. She's so absolutely beautiful to look at. And she'll play, of course, really the antagonist and protagonist, I guess you can say. And, uh, and so her characters are very different from one another, but man, it's still Barbara Steele, and man, you get to, it's just, she is amazing. And uh, I wanna carry this on the next week with a film that I've never seen before with Castle of Blood. I wanna say 74, maybe. I. I'm probably wrong on that, but I uh, ordered that today, and so I'll be getting that and looking at that for the first time, and so that's going to be fun, because I've seen Black Sunday multiple times now, uh, but man, every time I watch it, and it's the same with The Long Hair of Death, and I'm hoping the same for Castle of Blood, which I've never seen, but I've heard good things about, but uh, this movie will just, man, this movie just, uh, it's insane, it's just soaked with... Uh, just atmosphere and the score helps as well but man even without the score this just uh, to see it I mean I, I don't know if there's really a movie quite like this and, and how incredibly awesome would it have been if uh, something like uh, The Nun uh, could have tapped even more into this um, and been even much more of a slow burn and just worked its way through uh, but, you know, we're different today than they were back then. And, uh, but it's 60. Man, you know, the, you know these people were shocked when they saw this for the first time. And so uh, if you haven't seen it in a while, uh, man, pull it off your shelf, put it in there, and, and, and re-look re at it. Or if you, for some reason, don't... Uh, oh, I dropped it. It's over here somewhere. Uh, the Kino, and of course, has a release. And uh, Errol, I believe, put out a really phenomenal... Uh, release as well and uh, so uh, here at week 324 body bags uh, as we roll on towards yet another theme week at the end of the month I'm celebrating Italian freaking horror with some Mario Baba this week and uh, we'll roll on right so uh, 1960 Black Sunday uh, just an absolutely masterful masterful work from uh, the master himself uh, and he is one right he is one um, so as always, as always, we'll just go ahead and end this thing, give my voice a break. We'll always end this uh, with go freaking bells. <laughs>